All right, so we have part two of 3.2 here, logarithmic functions and their graphs. Um, we're going to focus on the graphing part now. So here we have a graph of a log, basic log function, a base a of x, where a is greater than 1, of course. Um, and it looks like this. So I kind of drew something like this in, I think, our first example for this unit. And you can see that it is kind of following the same curve that goes upward, it's increasing, it crosses through one zero, and then it has this vertical asymptote here at x equals zero. Okay, so let's go ahead and look at some of the properties based off of that. The domain is zero to infinity because again, it starts at zero, sort of, you know, it doesn't actually touch zero, but it, it, it doesn't go past zero and it goes to infinity. The range is gonna be all row numbers because it does span the entire y-axis. This one has an x-intercept, which is at one zero, and if you remember back to our exponentials, that one had a y-intercept. Um, I don't know if we mentioned it, but the, the, the parent function for the exponentials does not have an x-intercept. Um, since this is the inverse of that one, this one does not have a y-intercept, okay? It's increasing as shown with the arrows, and it is continuous. We talked about our, our, uh, our VA at x equals zero, the vertical asymptote. And then we also have some notation here that says that as x is getting closer to zero on the right side, this is on this number, this means on the right side, as we're moving inward this way to x equals zero, the graph is going down to a negative infinity. So we, if we go in this way to zero, the graph goes down to infinity, okay? And that's why that asymptote exists there. Um, it is one-to-one -one because it passes the HLT, the horizontal line test which means it has an inverse, and that inverse is this guy right here, which is our exponential function that we talked about earlier. Um, it is a reflection of, again, this function over y equals x. So if you think about it, and you don't have to copy this part, but if you think about it, if I were to do like a diagonal here down the middle of y equals x, and I were to flip this over, okay, you would get something like, like that. And this other something that I'm drawing, again, you don't have to do this one. This would be your y equals a to the x that we talked about in the previous um, unit, subunit, okay? All right, so with that in mind, and again, the only point we have for sure, for sure here on this, and this picture is that one zero. Let's go ahead and talk about some transformations now. So this is example number three. We have two transformations, and we're also gonna get the domains from this because that goes into the next part. If we have letter A, g of x equals negative 1 plus log base 3 of x, the only transformation I see here happening is that negative 1. This can be rewritten, I'm going to rewrite it actually first because I know a lot of you get confused with this, as the following, log base 3 of x and then minus 1. So if we look at that minus 1, this is like our k value, which moves the graph up or down, okay? So in this case, we're looking at a a downward translation of one. So the graph is going to move down by one unit or one space or a vertical uh, shift or vertical translation. Okay, so what I'm gonna do for this one, first one, I'm trying to get this all on the screen here, is I'm gonna do a quick sketch and I'm going to graph our OG first. So remember our OG is the original graph all of my log functions are going to pass through this one zero. Okay, so it's going to look something like that. So this is y equals log base three of x. Okay, and I'm going to go ahead and do this new one. So this is moving down by one point. Okay, well then let's say negative one is right here. This point would move down. To this point, right? So now that point would be 1, negative 1. And my new graph is going to follow something like, I don't know, something like that. It's going to be a little bit below the original graph. Okay, and this would be my g of x equals log base 3 of x and then minus 1. Okay, yeah, that's basically it. Um, so you can see that the vertical asymptote is still the same. My VA is still going to be at zero because I didn't really move left or right. I just kind of moved it down. So our VA is 
at x equals zero still, which means that the domain for this one, the domain for g of x, okay, is still going to be from zero to infinity. And the range, of course, is unaffected as well. Okay, and the VA is again this guy. So let's see one that is affected by a translation of some sort. Letter B. This one has a two on the inside of the parentheses. So this part is going to act as our H. Remember that H moves left or right. Okay, so in this case, we're looking at two units or a horizontal translation, if you want to think of horizontal shift, two units to the right. So two units to the right. So just like the one before, I'm going to go ahead and draw my OG first. Okay, so I know that the OG is going to pass through one zero. And it looks kind of like something like that. It doesn't actually, you know, touch the y-axis here. And this is our, I'm going to put OG. You all should know what that means by now in my language. It's just the original graph. Okay, so it's this one. Y equals log base 3 of x in this case. And then if I'm going to units to the right, okay, well, I'm going to have to move that point, right? So 2, 3. So now it's going to be over here. So this is going to be 3, comma 0. Oh, yeah, 3, comma 0 because it went over 2 to the right. And now this graph is going to do something like, like this. So this would be our h of x, okay? Our original vertical asymptote, and I'll try to keep the colors the same here. So the black's gonna represent the, the OG here. So our original vertical asymptote was at zero. Okay, that's how all of the log functions start. But since we did two units to the right, well, now that's going to move also. So one, two. So now we're looking at a vertical asymptote at two. So we have a VA at X equals two. And there is a quick way to find this. All you got to do is look right here. Okay, it's going to be basically the opposite of whatever that is will be your vertical asymptote. Because that represents how many spaces we moved over left or right. Okay, and then since our vertical asymptote ch uh, changed, then the domain is directly affected. So in this one, the domain starts at, you know, two, but not quite two. So it's a parenthesis, and then it goes to infinity. The range, well, that one doesn't change. It's still going to be everything. So all real numbers. Okay, and that's basically it for these two. So nothing too, too crazy. Let's go ahead and look at some more examples. I think we've got about three more examples to go. So we're going to introduce the natural, oh, sorry, the natural log function. It's a little bit maybe out of um, out of order, but that's all right. So just like the we had that natural base of e in the exponentials, we have the natural log natural logarithmic function with our base of e. Okay, so. Basically, the a, the a, which is our base, becomes the, the number e, which is at 2.1782, and you know, et cetera. And another way to write this is using this notation. So ln of x is what you're going to see in most textbooks and in calculus. We don't really write it like this. It's typically written like this, which just means natural log. OK, and this is called the natural log function. So, and it works the same way. The graph looks pretty similar. It still goes through 1, 0. You know, it just has a different rate of change. Um, based on its base. So I'm just going to show you really quickly how to use the calculator for this one because this one does require the calculator. We're going to rewrite all of these first and then you can we'll go ahead and plug them in real quick. Okay so f of x is equal to our ln of x here. So this would just be ln of 2. This would be ln of 0.4. This one is ln of 0. This one is ln of all of that, 1 plus the square root of 2. And then we just evaluate them. So these ones, again, you do have to use your calculator for because the, the number e is not quite the base 
uh, based on we can calculate. Give me one second. Let me go ahead and do that real quick. All right, so here are the values that I got, and I went ahead and used the different calculator this time just so we can see that it works. So ln of 2 is, trying to get the gray out of here, 0.693. Okay, so I'm gonna, let me write these down while I'm saying them. Hopefully you all can see that. I know it's a little not so bright. So ln of 2 was 0.693 approximately. ln of 0.4 is that negative 0.916, negative 0.916. Ln of zero, nothing really came out. I'm gonna show you why in just a bit, okay? So let's move on to the last one. Ln of one plus square root of two is at 0.881, so 0.881. Let me go ahead and um, make this a little bit brighter. All right, so I'm going to retype ln of 0 so you can see what happens. So ln of 0 and then close the parentheses. When you click the Enter button, we get this error, okay? And again, the reason that is is because remember that how at, at 0, at x equals 0, we have that vertical asymptote. So there really is nothing on that, on that value. So that's why we get the error, okay? So this one is going to be undefined also, like the one we had before. Okay, and that's basically it, guys. So let's go ahead and jump down to the last part here. And then we got two more examples that go with it. Or three more examples, I should say. I'm sorry. Three more examples. So now we have the properties of natural logarithms, um, which are pretty similar to the other one, but now we're thinking more in terms of ln instead of log. Okay, so ln of 1 is going to be equal to 0 because if you think of others, like an imaginary little e here. And you don't have to write this, but pretend there was like an e here, e to the 0 is 1. That's where this is coming from, okay? ln of e is equal to 1. So again, if you think of an imaginary little e there, e to the 1 is equal to e. ln e of x is equal to x. So this is that weird property that has the inverse. Um, the inverse of ln is, is going to be our, our e, so think of it like this if you want x equals x, okay? So whenever these two are together, like so, you can think of it like that. That makes it easier. And then we have the one-to-one -one property, just like the one before, where if these two are the same, well, then these two must be the same also, and x equals y, okay? Let's go ahead and use those properties to simplify these down here. So for the first one, ln of e of one-third is equal to what? So um, we can go ahead and rewrite it, ln e, one third is equal to x. What is our x going to be? Well, according to property number three, the third one, okay, I know that I can, these two kind of neutralize each other, right? So it's just going to be one third. X is just one third. I didn't even believe the x for that one. But that's all right. Um, five ln of one, okay, so this one's going to be a little bit tricky. Um, but I know, actually, no, not too, too tricky. I know that ln of 1, so I'm going to put this, ln of 1 is equal to 0 according to this first property here. So if I substitute that, I have 5 times 0. So I'm substituting this part, which is just 0. Okay. And then last but not least, ln of 7 is equal to ln of x plus 1. Again, if these two are the same, then these two have to be the same. So we have 7 is equal to x plus 1. We solve. So if I subtract both of these by 1, I get x is equal to 6. And that's it for those real easy stuff there. Okay, last two examples. And then we're done with this video. Nice short videos this week. Finding the domain of a log function. So we kind of talked about this already just a little bit. Um, and it really has a lot to do with the transformations and your vertical asymptote. Um, if you noticed for the second graph that we did, we found domain for, all I really looked at was the inside of that parentheses. So for the domain, if you want to do kind of like a quick, like a little shortcut here, okay, we're going to look at the x minus h part. That's a quick version of how to do this. And what we want to do is we want to set that 
uh, greater than zero because wherever it's greater than zero is where it's defined. So our domain would be anything that falls greater than that. Okay, so for the first one, I'm going to go ahead and do x minus one greater than zero and solve it. So we add one to both sides, x is greater than one. Okay, so that means that my, my um, this is actually my domain, but if you wanted to write it in, you know, interval notation, it would be from one to infinity. And this is our domain. Just to kind of prove the point a bit more, if I were to graph this, I know based on my x minus one, so based on this, there is a VA at x equals one. Okay, so there's my one right there. So there's my VA and the graph is going to move one to the right. So originally it was here at one zero, now it's going to be at two zero. So it does something like this. And you can see that the domain for this is from one to infinity. So we're good to go there. Okay, this one's a little bit trickier because we kind of swap swap the spaces here. So again, we're gonna look at our inside here. So two minus X make that greater than zero. So we're gonna have negative X is greater than negative two. Divide both sides. So x is going to be less than 2. So in case you forgot, because a lot of people tend to forget this, um, whenever you divide or multiply by a negative, the inequality symbol is going to flip. Okay, And that makes sense because if you think about it, this negative inside is a reflection over the y-axis. So it should be on the other side. So let's go ahead and just double check that. So if I have my graph here, okay, and again, I'm going to do this real quick. Well, I know that the two, okay, is gonna move it over and that the negative is going to flip it. So originally it was here on, actually let's just do it this way. Two minus X equal to zero, let's solve. So negative X is going to equal to negative two. So X is equal to two, right? So my vertical asymptote is gonna be at two. This is my VA. Okay, but because of that negative here inside, I have to flip it over. So now it's going to be kind of like, like this. Something like that. My, my curve's probably not that great, but something like that. So that means the domain is going to be x is less than two, or we can also think of it as negative infinity all the way to two. Okay, and that's basically it. We have one more that's a little bit strange looking. So I'm gonna give you just a quick, this is kind of an extra, but that's all right. So we have ln of x squared. Okay, x squared is tricky to deal. We're just gonna deal with the, the actual math here. So x squared greater than zero, that's what we have to solve, okay? Well, x squared um, greater than zero, if we take the square root, it's still gonna be just zero, right? Because we can't really do this. But what this is saying is that basically um, it's going to be defined anywhere except for zero. And that's, it's a little bit tricky here because if I, if I solve here, look, let me do it this way. If I solve this one, we get x is equal to plus or minus zero, which isn't really a, a deal. You can't really do that. So basically we have a VA at x equals zero. Okay. But because of that square, this graph actually does look really, really weird. So x is not going to just be greater than zero. It's also going to be less than zero because of this weirdness here. And you can graph it to just kind of double check. Um, when you do graph it, and I did graph this one before, you're welcome to check it out uh, afterward if you'd like. But it will look something like this. So we're going to have a point here on this side and a point on this side. And it does something weird like that. I cannot plot a point, obviously. So it looks kind of like this, and we have a VA right in the middle, our vertical asymptote, which is this part right here. Okay, so the domain for this one is basically both of these pieces. It's going to be x greater than zero, or x is greater or uh, less than zero. 
or if you want to use interval notation, we can do negative infinity to zero, unite it with zero to infinity. And that is basically it, guys. So if you have any questions, as always, let me know. Thanks.